In this video, what I want to talk about are what are some of the breadcrumbs that lead us to understand what is likely to move price in the future. In other words, if you're going to be investing in the market, you need to invest only in something that you understand. And how do you gain an understanding? What are the metrics? What is the information that can actually give you that understanding? And I wanted to start this video just by thanking DIY guy who commented on the channel. He said the only thing that moves price ever are market sales. And he did that in a response to the video I did on XG Boost on machine learning because the outcome of that was, hey, this only predicts price movement with 1% better accuracy than a 50-50. And even that, you know, could be 49, 51. It's about 50-50. You might as well get a monkey to throw darts at a board. And so I really appreciated this comment. In fact, I wanted to use it for this video. I even said so in my reply back to DIY guys. So thank you. Thank you for that comment. Really, the question becomes, what are the indicators and what are the metrics that can tell us that price is likely to go up or go down on a certain crypto? And I'm more interested in whether or not prices are likely to go up because shorting crypto in itself can be quite a painful task and requires margin trading, etc. And so that got me to thinking. So I went over to the Poloniex platform. And, you know, when you look at the order book, we realize that unless you're staring at the screen 24 seven and you're able to read what traders are doing, and you're able to read the order book like a superstar. And that is by very nature of your gift, your talent. That is something you're able to do unless you're able to do that. I actually agree with DIY guy. I think that it's very time consuming. It takes six months to learn it. And actually, it's market sales that move price. In other words, it's aggressive market buyers and sellers coming into the order book and placing market orders. So what is the process and what is what are the indicators that can help you to determine whether something is likely to go up? And I'm going to talk about whether something's likely to go up or down. And so that leads me over to Bitfinex. If you go to Bitfinex and you just click on uh, any coin, you just go to the exchange, you click on any coin, you will see this little chart icon over here. And when you click on that, you can see that we've got Bitcoin BTC powered by Santiment. Now you need to know that I spoke with Santiment before making this video. So Santiment have actually been a part of the making of this very video. And I'm going to talk about why in a second, because when I go across here through Bitfinex and I go and look at the metrics that are provided by Santiment, I start getting some information that I'm not really used to seeing and I'm not really used to hearing about on YouTube channels or blogs, etc. One of those is daily active addresses, developer activity, network growth, transaction volume, all of this information. And really, that's quite interesting to me, because what is that information other than the actual on chain metrics and developer metrics and even social metrics, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, and also financial metrics that can be leading indicators of price. They can be the breadcrumbs that show you, hang on, someone is planning something. Money is likely going to flow in or out of this coin. Now that leads me on to Santiment. So Santiment have three different products in the market of which I am a customer of one of them, the Santiment API. But I wanted to give you an idea of who Santiment are and what their products are. The first product I wanted to talk about is Sandgraphs. So Sandgraphs is really ideal for people that want to do advanced analytics. They don't want to do coding themselves, etc. They just want to see the data and see the information social on chain financial development. They want to look at news. They want to look at the sort of discussions coming up on trading forums, etc. All of that sort of information is available through sand graphs. And it's really kind of interesting because if you watch these videos through, you'll find them really, really inspiring. In fact, there's one metric that I'm going to talk about in this video that I've been tracking and I've found enormous interest in. In fact, I think it's actually going to underpin how and when I look to add coins to my portfolio. In fact, it might be one of the very bedrock metrics for that. And I'm looking forward to taking you through that and getting your comments on this video. So I do encourage you to go to Sandgraphs and just watch this video because you're going to learn a lot about these metrics. By the way, I am going to do videos individually on each of these metrics. I'm going to talk about one metric at a time. What is the leading metric? What information does it give you? How can it be made? How can it be useful? So I'm going to be covering more in depth on these metrics. So that brings me on to Sand Sheets. So what is Sand Sheets? Sand Sheets is essentially for people that want to do their own machine learning, back testing. They want to write their own algorithms using spreadsheets or Google Sheets, etc. And they want to do that sort of analysis themselves. And 
create their own graphs and charts without needing to know advanced programming, web building, development, all of that kind of thing. And so Samsheets is actually a really affordable way to do that. But for someone like me who wanted access on the platform for daily active addresses, daily active dep deposits, exchange flow balance, this is, a, by the way, a fantastic leading metric, and I can't wait to talk about it now in this video. We're going to get to it shortly. MVRV, all of these really useful metrics, even the ones down to development activity or even reading what traders are saying in trading forums about certain coins. This is all stuff that I wanted to bring to the platform. And so the only way to do that was to go through the Sentiment API. So the Sentiment API is essentially what I use to get that data for the crypto wizards community and for those of you who are already on the platform you would have noticed this new metric section over here this is all sentiment this is all sentiment providing this data and i'm really excited by it and there's some really cool signal tools we're building around that but what's super interesting is if you're doing any kind of development work and you're looking for some kind of engine some kind of data point to pull that data sentiment is essentially what you can use to get that that, that data affordably and it's thanks to sentiment that we've actually been able to include this in Crypto Wizards affordably because they're working with us behind the scenes and in doing this video to help actually integrate and make this possible. So this is super, super cool and super interesting because now we're going to talk about what are some of the leading metrics that Sentiment provides. Now, one of those metrics is exchange flow balance. And I want to talk about exchange flow balance because I ran an algorithm recently and have an algorithm running called the signal exchange flow balance, which essentially finds when the exchange flow balance pops up and down. And I want to show you a specific coin here because it's a really good example. And there are many examples like this, which is seal coin. So if I search seal coin over here, I don't even know what seal coin do. And I, I really don't care at this point in time. And I could find out very easily actually through some of the search options here. But seal coin showed this big pop in exchange flow balance. In other words, the amount of tokens that are being flooded onto an exchange or out of an exchange net. This is a breadcrumb. This is a really interesting metric because what it's saying is something's happening. Someone is doing something. So something interesting is happening here in the market. And when you see this pop, you can see price didn't really change. So price is the blue line. You can see this pop over here that went up and this is really really interesting to me because if i look down here i can also see this curve of volume starting to creep in and then again we had a pop down as price was going up so we had a pop up and down uh, the net of that washes out to be a, a small net down but then we had another big pop up and we can see that that was supported by volume as well and soon after that price just rallied so price really went from about zero zero point uh, $0.029 uh, to seal and all the way up to 0 0.0048, which is where it is right now. And we've seen another pop. Now, if you saw this initial pop, you could have really just bought some of that coin and placed a mild kind of stop loss, I would say down here. So be prepared to lose, you know, 5% of any investment with this kind of strategy, maybe something loose like that. I don't know, whatever your trading approach is. So I'm going to cut us back to Excel very quickly. You're going to recognize this chart from a recent video that I did looking at token velocity versus price for Dragon Chain and calculating the Z score of that. All of this data came from sentiment. So I actually went online onto the sentiment area and went into their free area to pull historical data. You don't get recent data if you're doing the free version, but you can play with their API and with their engine. If you want me to do a video on how to do that, I will just ask in the comments, but it's really, really easy to do. So you can go and get that data. I mean, what would be better is if you just got it straight from Sandsheets, because then you get, I think, up to three years of historical data and also right up until current data as well. And so you can put that data into an Excel table and essentially do your graphs and charts just like I did over here. This all came from sentiment. So I'd like to give them the credit for that. Now, some of the other things that we can analyze and look at here are things like developer activity. Developer activity is really interesting because it shows you what kind of investment is happening in a coin. So if I look at, for example, if I go over here maybe to Crypto Wizards quickly and I go to all metrics, I'm just going to go down here to developer activity. One of the things I noticed was being asked in trading forums around Ripple is, are Ripple still even doing development work? And one of the cool things was I was, a, I was able to come over here, punch in Ripple, hit a search and see what came up. And very quickly I was told, yes, in fact, Ripple are 
doing development work. In fact, developer activity has really increased. And how do you measure development activity? Well, any developers know that any changes made in teams in development work are pushed to GitHub. And so we can actually track that or Santamin actually tracks that and provides that data. So even though Ripple's price over here has been bombing, development work is still happening. It's still increasing, it's still going on. And so I thought that was really interesting and I had that answer spot on really quickly. And again, that was thanks to Santiment. Now, another cool thing that Santiment does is they give you the top social movers. So if we look at social data, what is the social sentiment like? What is the social volume like, etc.? We can actually go and see that based on the data that and the signals that Santiment already tracked. So something in green means that there's a high score. And for example, singularity.net is showing a lot of activity. Bitcoin Diamond, which has a fair amount of volume, is also showing a fair amount of activity, not that much, but it's a gainer socially. So we can actually go and have a look at that social volume. So looking at Bitcoin Diamond and analyzing what happened with the social volume just before a massive price hike, we can see that in trader forums, there was so much activity on social volume just at the top. So whenever you see the social activity increasing, people getting excited, people jumping in, the conversations blowing up, etc., it's likely that that run has had its time. And so you really want to sell to that market and get out of the coin. So again, a very useful leading metric, but we can check that for other forums as well. I can look at Telegram, I can look at Discord, I can look at the discussions, the chats. Now I also wanted to speak to you developers who I know follow the channel as well. The Discord area and group for Santiment is fantastic. Anytime I've had a question, they have responded super quick. And not only that, they respond with, did you know, you can go here, this is easier, we should do this, let's change that. Okay, this is your experience, let's make it better. It literally is, you, you just feel like you're taken care of and it's really quick, the responses are super fast, you can get to what you need really, really quickly and easily. So it's really a great company to work with, at least that's been my experience so far. So I hope you got what you wanted out of this video. I've given you an idea of where some of the leading metrics are, some of the leading metrics that I'm certainly taking a look at. So if you have any questions as usual, just ask in the comments. And until the next time, take care and talk soon.